Hey coaches, Coach Simpson. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, there's a lot of content I'm trying to put out uh, for coaches to be able to use. Hopefully, um, whatever offense you're running, you can take some of these ideas and put it towards it. This video is gonna be speaking specifically uh, to a play we run or a concept that we run, but I hope that the idea is something you can take and run with. Uh, if you would like more information on my offense or more of my materials, you can search this channel or you can go to fbcoachsimpson.com where there'll be more information. We're gonna to talk to today about if-then. Uh, if-then football, which I think is a huge reason that I migrated towards a lot of wing tee based offense and a lot of RPO-based offense, is it cleans up the play calling and it cleans up uh, your quarterback's eyes and it helps you a lot to keep your, your, your football simple. Um, but to do this, it takes a lot of time on the front end and so I'm going to kind of go through how this if-then thought process works. We're going to use buck sweep as our concept and then talk about setting up other things off of that run play. Okay, so uh, buck sweep for us is like everybody else runs it. We're going to block uh, down on the play side, pull kick, and we're going to hand the ball off to our back. He's going to get flat and get vertical. If you want more of the buck sweep, search this channel or go over here. I've got courses available on that. Today, I want to talk about all the adjustments you make off of that, because as you're calling this play, it doesn't always work. That's how football goes. So you have to know what to go to next. So there are a few ways you can go about this. Most series-based wing T offenses uh, will go off of a series. So if they're overloading number-wise to stop bug sweep, then you're going to come back and run uh, the double handoff, or we call that counter or if they're playing outside or scraping over the top, you could run trap or some type of inside run. And all of that is good. It's a great concept. Uh, or you can run play action passes. But what I've done is I've highlighted certain players. You know, if this guy does this, here's a couple different options that we can do inside a buck sweep. And again, this is not unique to me. This is how most swing T guys uh, tend to think. Um, it's just some things that we've put together and made it clean for our guys to understand. So the first thing we're looking for, this is a base 3-4 look that we may get, kind of a, a 50 front with our twins, he's widened out there. Uh, it could be a different look, but the idea is still going to be the same. So we're looking at if the following guys make the play, what are some options we can go to to kind of uh, make them pay for doing something. So we'll start with the corner. Obviously, if you're running the ball and a, and a deep safety makes a tackle, probably the first thing you're looking at doing is run some type of play action pass. So the corner is coming down and making a play. There's a lot of different uh, play action passes you can do in this offense. You can run waggle coming the other direction, throw the drag or the post, or you can run the same side play action. Whatever you want to run, if this guy's coming down, you know, that should be open. Outside linebacker a lot of times will squeeze really hard. So if he's squeezing uh, really, really hard, then we can run, we can log him. And so if we're gonna run, he's squeezing hard to blow up our kick. We just log him with our guard and run it wider on buck sweep. So that's one easy adjustment you can make. Nine technique right here, we have a couple different looks we'll give him. So if he's giving us a lot of problems, good fitter or whatever it is, you know, we can uh, bypass him so we can block out, block down and kick him and run it tight. Okay, we could double him, let our tight end kind of fire off and block him a little bit and then work to backside backer. Uh, or we can just uh, allow him to, like I mentioned, come up field and leave him a block. He could run trap. Okay, so there's a lot of different options you can run for these three guys. But that's all the if-then process to get there. Backside, let's look at a slanting nose. He's coming through a gap and he's giving us problems. A lot of times we will tell our tackle if that's the case, we're going to block all the way down, maybe condense our splits, block all the way down, and give him some help. Okay, so that's one adjustment you can make off of that. Some teams are even running midline. When they're leaving the nose unblocked, sending the center on the backside linebacker and reading the nose. So there's a couple different options you can do there, again, with the if-then football. Four eye is squeezing or he's playing outside. We're going to have different RPO calls in our offense where we can read him. You're starting to see this now with teams that don't even run buck sweep. Where they're just releasing outside and reading an interior D lineman. So this is becoming common. You have to have it in, built into your offense to have it. That's the if-then inside of the same play. Then you can do an if-then uh, process with formations. So if you want to run buck sweep and they're giving you this, and 
and we're having a hard time because these guys are making tackle. We don't want to throw a play action pass. Well, what are some things we can do? Well, the first thing we're probably going to do is get into some type of overlook or a tight end trips look. We're going to take this receiver and bring him out. He comes out wide, and we're going to see the adjustment to that. Okay, are we going to get something along the lines of you know that look where we really uh, pull the corner out now and put the safety in the middle of the field? A lot of times teams will go to that look, and now you basically have removed. So this guy's making the tackle. You've now removed him from the picture, or are they even going to stay too high at times? Sometimes teams will try to stay kind of too high, and we've got a good receiver here, and now there's really an issue there. We're going to try to use formations to dictate what we want, or if the team's overloading this way, perhaps we go too tight, or perhaps we even run the ball to the quick side. So there's a lot of different things you can do with formations, as well as the if-then on the players. I think sometimes that's overlooked. A lot of really good offensive coordinators that I've been able to watch you know, playing on Saturdays and Sundays and even Friday nights, these guys are great at running the same base concepts but manipulating the defense with overlooks or trips looks or tight end or no tight end, getting the look they want to run the play that they want. That's very much in my mindset still in the if-then. If I want to run this play, then what's the best way to create the matchup the angles, create the blocking scheme the way I want it to go. Still very much an if-then mindset. Hope you get something from this, guys. I've got a whole if-then course on my website, FB Coach Sims. It's like 60 minutes. It goes a lot more in-depth if you're interested in it. If you haven't already done so, I would I appreciate if you subscribe to this channel or like this video. I'm trying to grow this channel as I put out more information for coaches for free. Appreciate your time.